Yo, how's it going everyone? Um, so, it's quite interesting really because I never sort of weighed in on um, my thoughts and feelings on the Hogwarts thing, you know, the, the controversy surrounding that. Um, my kind of take on it is that if, you know, if it truly offended you and you truly like, you didn't want to support the game, then, you know, you didn't buy the game. But if you just wanted to play the game because you're a fan of, you know, the Harry Potter sort of world, but you didn't want to associate yourself with jk rowling and that because of the comments that i made i'll be honest i never read this this tweet that what people are going about i haven't really done much in deep dive into it because the lgbtq community isn't something i'm a part of and i'm not i have i don't have like a doing to come across bad but i don't have a vested interest in the community i'm not um and i'm not an advocate and i'm not someone who you know is against or anything like that it's just i don't have any I don't have any stakes in the game, if that make any sense. I haven't actually played the Hogwarts game, not because I don't want to, just uh, <laughs> just have another chance, you know, or, or anything like that. So, um, so it's quite interesting, you know, like that that all happened, and there's a big sort of you know debate around it, and the conversations were happening, and you should do, you shouldn't, and how you felt about it on personal level. But now we've got a new one. Now we've got a new one. This one I want to look at because it's quite interesting because it's something that's actually um, not that's not happening with LGBTQ. But something that's happening kind of, you know, kind of a, a more, um, I don't want to say it's more important or or less important or whatever you want to say. I'm trying to, because I know someone's going to say something, but I want it to be kind of, I want it, it's, it's kind of like, it's, it's world known. It's a world, a worldwide known issue, you know, on a quite a, quite a large, quite, I'm going to say it, it's going to be a, probably a larger scale, you know, or maybe of equal scale, I don't know, but it's, it's the Atomic Heart, which is basically a game that's been set in um, a Russia, like a, a, a sort of a Bioshock Russia. If you're a gamer, you'll know what that kind of means. If you're not, um, there's loads of articles out there and loads of things like that. Uh, basically, I'm watching someone a uh, video here by someone called uh, Rose, R-O-Z-E, um, who have done a video saying, yes, it's okay to buy Atomic Heart. And this is a response to a video made by Harenko. Um, Rose, I think, goes into Harenko's video and picks out points and explain and, and probably counters that. I want to hear what Rose has to say, and I'm quite interested because, you know, I was a bit kind of like, oh well, yeah, what a time to bring out a game that's based in Russia, you know, you know, Russian is, and I believe the the creators are Russian as well. I think that's the idea. Um, so yeah, it's be quite interesting. I want to, it'd be interesting to see what's what gets said here and sort of the points. Um, I watched um, Harenko's video when Asman Gold did it. But I'm interested to see what uh, Rose says about this. So let's have a little little watch see what's going on here. Jump into some stupid internet drama. So I saw this video by a creator named Harenko about Atomic Heart, a game that is widely anticipated because of its rather unique setting and inspiration from Bioshock. Unfortunately, the creators of said game are Russian, so you know they're going to be dragged into something about what their government does, even though they make video games and foreign policy decisions. Which, but then, that's that's the problem, isn't it? As soon as you're <laughs> from said country or you're you're from said you know group as you know one does something bad and the rest get painted with the same brush you know a decision by one person in power obviously automatically makes you know and it's, it's an unfortunate sort of side effect is that everyone gets painted the same way you know you're russian you're bad because of what's going on in ukraine and it's unfortunate that people who are who are russian and they're just drawing from they're drawing from their own sort of experiences and their own kind of life to make this game for people to play you know in a kind of a in a setting like this so yeah it is that, that is a shame i will say that's a shame and they're getting they're getting pulled into a, a controversial kind of thing which is what this video is it starts with Harenko telling off people who won't change their minds that they should go listen to their Joe Rogan podcast or play Call of Duty. So you know this guy's about to be completely insufferable. Go on, you have a Joe Rogan podcast to catch up on or play Call of Duty or something, I don't know. Off you go. After that, he admits he's Ukrainian. Being Ukrainian myself. So now we know why this video got made. This is someone who has skin in the war. And yeah, I, again, I, I think it's like... If you're, I mean, I'm, I'm not Ukrainian and I'm not Russian, you know. So I'm on, you know, I'm a, in a in a sense a spectator to it all. You kind of keep seeing the updates and that, but it's like, you know, if you're, you know, you know, just standard Joe Blow Russian guy just trying to live their lives and this is happening, 
it's gonna you're gonna feel you're gonna feel some way you're either gonna support your your, your country or you, you're gonna be against it and we've seen there are plenty of Russians against it and then also you've got you know the Ukrainians who are obviously going to be 100% against it regardless of what facet of, facet of um, you know media or you know anything that you know even re remotely symbolizes or represents Russia in any way they're going to be 100% against it so I can understand him feeling some you know some way about it and I think he's I think he's right to definitely but again it's like these are video games these are game creators you know Unless I mean, unless it comes out in this video, which I don't know if it will or if it, if it does, if it's even been said, any of these profits are going towards a war effort. Then that's a totally different story. But we'll see. And it's understandable why he might not want to buy Russian products. Though, if he really cared that much about his homeland, he should probably be critiquing nations that buy gas from Russia instead of a video game company. Uh, again, it's easy to attack something like this because we're well, not attack, but it's easy to sort of like pick at something like this because. You can you can just talk about a game because it's a game. When it comes in, when it starts with oil prices, mining, oil mining, things like that, I'm 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 no good. I couldn't I couldn't tell you what's right or wrong there or what's what. Um, I I mean it's just it's a it's a rabbit hole. It's a rabbit hole of things that you just unless you're fully educated in that area with gaming you'd like me, I could just make an opinion and say I like this game, I don't like this game, I support this game, I don't support this game. It's 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 a lot easier to say that than it is to go into all that stuff so i couldn't i couldn't really agree with that comment but yeah i get where the road is coming from as i can assure you one of these is actually benefiting the war effort and it's not the one that's a video game the next comment he makes is about the maker of the game munfish and how they've been sort of quiet about the fact that they were originally a russian company on the website of the studio there is currently no mention of the fact that this is a russian game dev I'm not sure if Hanko knows this, but we call this business tactics, because Russia is one of the most sanctioned countries in the world. And if you want to sell a product, it's generally a good idea to not try to sell that product in a country under sanctions. That, if they even mention the Russian anyway, they would just get flack, like they are right now. Hanko then furthers this critique about Munfish being Russian by bringing up a tweet they posted about how they're not political and are a pro-peace organization against violence. And is undeniably a pro- Guys, we have noted the question surrounding where we are at Munfish stand. We want to assure you that Munfish is a developer and studio of a global team focused on innovative game and is undeniably a pro-peace organization against violence against people. So they basically come out and said, we are nowhere associated with the war effort. <coughs> we are nowhere associated with the Russian efforts. We're nowhere associated with um, anything to do with, you know, any kind of aggression or, or attacks on ukraine we are we are pro peace against violence so if, if anything they're supporting you know they're supporting kind of the peace they want peace pretty much you know if anything they're more on ukraine side than russia's side if anything if you had to take a side you know as a as a developer but you should obviously you should never come out and say that but pro peace means you want peace you want this thing to stop so pro peace organization against violence against people any sane person would see that and go, oh yeah, that's a reasonable thing for a company to say because they're not trying to get involved in geopolitics. Yet, somehow it's hypocritical according to Haranko because he's one of those people who don't understand politics and games. And he shows it by saying this. We do not comment on politics or religion. Rest assured, we're a global team focused- Hold on, stop. We do not comment on politics? You're making a game that sole idea is USSR renewal and communism. You classified your game as inspired by Bioshock and Prey, yet you go the no politics in my video game route? This is one step away from the types of gamers who say I don't like politics in my video game and then immediately open up Fallout. And in the future... But the thing is like, again, it's, it's just like that comment by Harunko, I would definitely say like you could take you could take any game and pull it apart like that and look for some sort of political or sort of some kind of like you know underlying I mean I mean I don't put the easiest one I could pick out straight away from memory is, is playing Resident Evil. It's a virus. Do with that what you will. If I say virus, you think straight away your mind my mind was straight away go oh COVID because you know that was the joke. Everyone was like oh you got COVID you're you know, it's Resident Evil. Resident Evil's happening. We've got, we've got COVID. It's um, you know, we, we're all. It's, it's the end of the world. Is, you know, it, that there alone. Fallout. I mean, nuclear war. Like Bioshock. You know, a, a utopia in a in a 
in a in a war torn you know society. It's just any. I mean, these games are some of those games are probably well, Fallout and Bioshock could probably aimed at that kind of area, but most games get like I mean, nothing nothing can escape anyone's wrath at the minute. But this is such a hot topic. It's such a deep seated kind of political issue that you're gonna you know you're gonna feel strongly about it so he has he has every right to feel you know some way about it but yeah i don't think you know i just i don't think it's that they're making this game to sort of say fuck you to you know ukrainian people definitely not sure if you want an easy rebuttal against this terrible argument just post this image because it's true Henrico then goes on to say that the CEO of the company is going under a different and less Russian name, and used to work for a Russian social media company. Whose name is Robert Bagratuni, except that it isn't. His actual name is Maxim Zatsepin. Max previously had a position of a creative director slash top manager in Mail.ru, which is now presented as VK, the biggest social media platform in Russia. Okay. Uh What's your point? I mean, I would expect that. I mean, he's a Russian guy. I would expect him to work for a Russian company. Like, I who cares? No, really, like, who cares? After that... Yeah, he's Russian. He's going to have a job in Russia. <laughs> I don't know what it's... I don't know what's... I, I mean, unless it's... Again, unless there's, like, real motivations here. Like, some real ev hard, ev hard evidence. You know, some real, real hard evidence... And you know to show that this guy is supporting the 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 efforts, the war efforts. You know I, I can't. You know Jesus. Yeah. Herico discusses something that I agree with, and that's marketing and this sort of shady and gross pre-order thing they're doing. Be mad was a sixty dollar base game, ninety dollar pre-order for gold edition, and one hundred dollars for premium edition. Pre-orders like this that have different editions like gold and premium are bad, and it should stop. No, like, I really do agree with this. This is a good point. Unfortunately, he follows it up with this w- uh, I'm not too fussed about editions, that's about normal one, man. It's, just, it's not going to make any difference to me, it's the same bloody game. No difference, the only difference I'm going to get is in downloadable code. Most people just chuck it online later on anyway if they want to get rid of the game. Weird statement about how you would lose money if the game never came out, which is- not true at all for something that might not come out ever practically losing your money if you were to do what most normal people do and pre-order it through steam you'd be able to refund the game at any time prior to the release date unfortunately it doesn't seem like Harrenko really understands this and this whole marketing section honestly just feels bad other than the pre-order part which is legit criticism the rest of the video just feels like personal issues that he has with him being Russian, and less about if the game is good or bad. And there is exactly two minutes of badly made teaser trailer footage with no gameplay to serve as the video game's representation and marketing. The game didn't even have a release date, or even a release year at the time. I don't know what I say. What is his fair criticism? He also in is also in standard and standard. It seems like he's really just harping on because it's. Game really didn't even have a release date or even a release year at the time. Rise, as many people called this out to be a fake footage from a video game that doesn't exist, made by a shadow company with no records, just to scam people out of their pre-order money. Harrigo then moves on to economics and investors. He mentions Tencent, Gaijin Entertainment, and Gem Capital, and about how they're all invested in the company. Chinese Tencent and Russian GEM Capital and Gaijin Entertainment. The head of the PR, Konstantin Hovorun, illegally visited the Ukrainian Crimea, which is temporarily occupied by Russia, and repeatedly spoke in support of the policies and politics of the Russian Federation. Now, I'm not trying to be a dick here, but what does this have to do with Munfish? This is a guy who works for the investment company, okay? He doesn't work for Munfish, he doesn't represent any of their ideals. He has nothing to do with them other than the investment. Also, not to be that guy or that soy jack or whatever, but can we get a source on this? I mean, did this come from your dreams? You're not providing any evidence that he was someone who is supporting Russian Federation ideas. I agree with that. There's not been really any evidence. It's kind of just been, here's this person, here's a picture, here's a name, and this is what they've done. It's kind of like, yeah, you need a paper trail, you need links to these things. But yeah, I can understand, like, you know, you're going to dig as deep as you possibly can, you're going to look as hard as you can, and 
look at everyone who's involved in anything that you know would definitely kind of like stand to reason that you know you're you're so you know you're you're definitely supporting Russia in this war and this game's gonna the profits some of the profits from this game are gonna are gonna fuel the uh, the Russian war effort and fuel the 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 fight and stuff. It's so such a fine line and you know anyone could say anything you know when it when it comes to a, a russian investor or a russian you know business or any kind of russian influence it's going to be some someone's going to come out and say you know they're doing this because they support the the war in ukraine and they're there you know and it's, it's it's so tough it's so so tough um you know personally me i did a um you could look back on the channel i did a um a charity stream for Ukraine. I, I did. We raised some money um, on a tournament that uh, was, um, you know, it was uh, for a Ukrainian aid, and um, it was really successful. And you know, like, no, no one wants war. I don't want fuck. I don't want fucking war in twenty twenty three. Like, it's just. I know obviously it's ideals and ideologies that people have their own kind of. But like, some of them live in this freaking archaic time, and they can't. They, you know, it's it's. And people would justify it by saying, "Well, you know," and it's like, "Yeah, but you really want to, you really want to go to work and think, oh, you know, one day, you know, someone's going to press that big red button and it's all going to kick off." And it's just, no one wants any of that. No one wants war. Everyone just wants to get on with their lives, live as peaceful as possible. People have disagreements, but you have to, you can settle it by talking. But some people have to settle it by, you know, using weapons. It's just, you know, it's just. It's just the way of the way of the world is where we are as human beings, you know. But that's that's a whole other topic. But yeah, this is just again, you take all those factors into consideration and we're discussing a game, you know, a game. The more interesting connections Harenko found though were that Gem Capital and how it was founded by a guy who used to work for a Russian gas company and hung out with Russian oligarchs and was also involved with social media companies. Previously worked at Gazprom's subsidiary, Gazenergoset. The studio raised investments from them in 2021, where Anatoly met and became friends with oligarchs who got rich on oil and gas activities. And yeah, this is probably all true, but I'm gonna have to engage in some whataboutism and point out the fact that Activision fully cuddles up with the Pentagon for their Call of Duty games. This is not solely a Russian thing. Uh, everyone mixes with everyone, you know, it's a big club and we're not in it. He also brings up the privacy policy, which apparently says on the website that they can forward your data to the Russian government. It says that your information can and will be transferred to the Russian government, and particularly the Federal Security Service, and not just your username, but your full name, physical address, email, phone number, IP address, and so on. This is a good point, and it's something that's completely unacceptable. Yeah, that's pretty bad, and that's pretty bad. Like. I mean, I mean, as soon as I as soon as now I've heard that, I'm just like, okay, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it it just it makes you question, right? Like, you know, do, does anyone ever read the privacy policies? Like, does does anyone else do this? Like, or is this just solely this? Is it solely Atomic Heart that's doing this? You know, it's definitely something to look at. That's that's fucking crazy. Like, that's that is crazy. Like, I'm. I'm not even gonna lie. That's actually concerning. I'm like, I would, I would have considered maybe getting this game, but now, right now, I've heard that, you know, you know, when I heard it originally on the video, I watched an Asmongold Gold react to it, and now I'm listening to it again and hearing someone else talk about it. It's just like, yeah, it just, it does make you think, shit, you know, like that's something you need to ask. Why? Why did they need this information? We're buying a game, you know, not a gun. I agree with Herringo here. The Russian Federation should not have access to these people's information just because they were on the Munfish website. So if they haven't fixed this, they need to immediately. Unfortunately, he ruins his point immediately by making this weird joke about how Russia must be getting info to mobilize people, which... Is he aware that Ukraine has a draft? Gotta say, their mobilization methods are getting kinda dire. Yeah, nah, I won't be getting drafted. I mean, English, you know, nah. <laughs> Erico's next point is about aesthetic. He says that because of Munfish is using the USSR as a setting and aesthetic, they are somehow praising it. The game is filled to the brim with USSR themed keepsakes and memorabilia, from drinking condensed milk straight out of the can, to actual flags and symbols of the USSR hammer and sickle. This kind of approach to the showcase of USSR and communism 
walks a thin line between using it for world building and praising it. So, with that logic, what would make the Wolfenstein the New Order then? Considering it uses the aesthetics of a certain ideology quite a bit, including the flag. Does I suppose at the time when, when Wolfenstein was made, it was made before the war and no one really cared. It was just like, eh, okay. But now there's a war happening between Russia and Ukraine. You know, people are dying daily. <clears throat> and even now, now again comes out that as USSR symbolism and flags and ideologies. No one, no one, everyone forgets about Wolfenstein. You know, we, we talk about Atomic Heart because that's that's the game of the day. You know, so I get it. I get why it's kind of in focus because you know you're not going to go on about a game that came out X amount of years ago or was remade X amount of years ago. You're going to go on about a game that comes coming out soon. You know, during a war. You know, during a, a war effort. So. Yeah, no, I, it's hard. It's hard to make callbacks, you know, when something's something's like in your mind right now. Does that mean Wolfenstein is somehow pro of that ideology? And if it is, do you care, or is that cool with you? Because, well, you know. Harko also points to the advertising of the game, which they use slogans from the USSR during a dinner, which is strange, I will admit. A Remedy lead gameplay designer rightfully accused Monfish of being nostalgic about the Soviet regime, or even glorifying it. I don't get the feeling there's some sort of cult of USSR supporters. The Soviet Union is looked at very differently in Russia than it is in the West, so for them to do this, it's really not that crazy. Another point he brings up after this is so stupid, he's talking about the sexualization of robots, and I don't feel like typing anything out in response to that, so here's this image, and this is going to be my response. No. Very soft porn heroines. <laughs> Ridiculously large rest. Uh, yeah, okay. But, I mean, let's, let's be honest, like, there, there's this sexualization in a lot of media, you know, and you've got female robots so they're going to be somewhat sexualized I, I mean what can you it's, just, it's inescapable at this point it's going to be in most mediums you know and if it doesn't have that it's you know there it is I, I don't know what you can say really none other than through sexualization and objectification of women so far i have avoided showing these characters on screen but i am talking about the couple of female ussr styled robots that they suddenly added in recent trailers and thumbnails to get the attention of the lusty neckbeards and here we are at the end of the video here we go tells anyone who's pre-ordered the game to refund it and also if you can to send the money to ukrainian charity the first and the best step would be to cancel it, request a refund, and send that exact amount of money to Ukrainian charities. Well, don't worry, Harinko, because my tax dollars already go to you guys. Um, yeah, I think if you, if you feel strongly about this, and even if without this kind of like discussion or anything, and you, you, you pre-ordered and now the war's happening, and you feel kind of a way about it, you don't feel comfortable, yeah, then you, then, then refund it and then send the money to a Ukrainian charity to help. You know, help support people who have lost their homes and families, you know, and stuff like that. That's if that's how you feel, you know. Um, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, this is an American talking, you know, about this. So, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff going on in America at the minute that, like, they're going on, they're, they're, they're supporting Ukraine and they're offering a bit more uh, financial aid. So, I'm not American, so. Um, I don't. I, won't, I use the terminology. I don't have any skin in this game, and I haven't had a pre-ordered Atomic Heart. But um, you know, I do. I do support. I will say I do support Ukraine. I don't think. I don't think war's just fucking shit. And you know, the sooner it ends and it's done, the, the, the better off we'll all be because it's just everyone suffer. Everyone's suffering, not just you know, not just you know. I know, but obviously, people in Ukraine are suffering more than anyone, but. I've, the, the world feels the effects it's like a ripple effect you know <clears throat> whether you know it scares people people are scared you know they, everyone's you know people of uh, young kids and you know young adults <clears throat> who her, her generation came just after the war, a war ended and now we're in a you know you've got like a war going on somewhere else it might not might not be no, near to us me being in the UK and that you know super near but <clears throat> you know it's close enough that you feel it so 
you know again i'm not really like into these political things like i, I keep abreast of it like i check things out but it's just it's always interesting to me interesting to me when a game gets pulled into it a game that looks really interesting and really cool looking and has i don't want i'd like to play but then it comes like this this whole political situation stems from it so you want to just you think oh fucking hell why you know you're you're, you're annoyed <laughs> you're annoyed at the powers that be when it becomes like this because then you feel you feel guilty yourself Hopefully you don't have a lot of corruption because that would Oh Oh no. Also, why did you delete so many comments? Hey, unfortunately I'm forced to limp comments that are currently being bought by more faceless newly made accounts than anyone could ever realistically keep up with. I'm reading appreciate people taking time to provide their thoughts and feedback. I hope you can understand. Oh, okay. And I saw this pinned message you left saying that the comments were being botted by new and faceless accounts. But I can't see any of that because you've deleted all but 121 comments on a video that has 1.4 million views. And I'm not going to call you a liar or anything, but I really doubt that every comment was some Russian troll bot or whatever. I mean, I would imagine there are many fair critiques of your bad video. And it's very... <laughs> well, that's, that's uh, Rosie's verdict that the video's bad. I, I personally like, I mean, it's just... It's point, it makes points and then like Rose said it kind of it kind of gets countered by some other points and there's, there's there's no real hard evidence to substantiate any claims it's just kind of like this person had this job now they work here so they're clearly being funded by this it's, which is fine you know and again this person's Ukrainian Herenko is Ukrainian so it's, they're going to feel so strongly about this so you know I think that um, you know it's, it's 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 always interesting when it comes to games because you just think it's a game but then as we've seen with like, with with you know Hogwarts Legacy it's not just game it's not just a game anymore it becomes like such a you know it becomes a it's nuclear it's a, it's, a, it's nuclear you know depending on where you stand and what your stance is and what, what your views are of the world and people you know it's it's, it's nuclear and you know unless you just turn the internet off and you just turn your phone off and you go down to your local, sh like, I don't know, store, your game shop or whatever, and you go, I'd like to purchase one of these, please. And you buy it. And unless somebody turns around and says to you, you trans hater, you know, you you hate it, don't you? Look at what you're buying, you know, you would never know. You would never know. But because the internet, because the internet now is our window to the world, you know, it's our voice, it's our voice, it's the world voice. It's like, we're gonna, we're gonna hear everything. You know, you know, unless you're a certain age and you don't use it in it. But again, we're in an age where it's, you know, the next generation, they're going to be using the internet well up into their like late 60s, 70s. You know, the internet's going to be a, a sustainable source of media and information for, for them. You know, it was once new newspapers, now it's the internet. And there's no escaping these topics, you know, where it comes to a game that was, you know, being made by a Russian or, you know, it supports trans rights or doesn't support trans rights or whatever it may be you know you can't escape it very strange that you delete them but i digress you know in the end you really are allowed to spew that sort of nonsense if you want to and if that video really did speak to you go ahead and boycott the game you know whatever makes you feel good about yourself though like i said earlier i don't think boycotting a video game will stop a war that's been brewing for years but hey it's your decision not mine see ya yeah okay uh Good. It was a good video. I liked. I liked Rose's response. There it was pretty, kind of just you know. It was done. Done. Just said what you wanted to say. Got his points out. And uh, thanks a lot to Rose for making that video. And thanks. I, oh, and thanks a lot to Haranko for the video as well. And it's always interesting to hear kind of gamers, you know, people who are passionate about games talking about, um, you know, their games and that. Um. So yeah, yeah, I really like it. Yeah. We're reaching peak stupidity when we need to sell someone to tell us it's okay to play a game. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it has sent us all dissent, dissenting comments that ask so much of a question. Do not trust this Haranga guy here. Yeah. But yeah, someone's like, okay, let's hear it. Five minutes in the video, I was like, okay, this is bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, day sex all built around an idea political views yeah real world so it's like to say there's no yeah Jennifer hit piece anything that Russian is bad everything that criticizes other pubs yeah that's it yeah I, I mean yeah I'm really starting to get sick of this year's current trend of gamers 
more likely Twitter users who take some arbitrary thing about a game to excuse it, assume the game has malicious intentions and try to spread a boycott of the product. First was people accusing Dead Space Remake of being overly woke just because they had a trans symbol in the corner of the bathroom sign. Oh yeah, I remember that, yeah. Currently, there are people claiming who buy Hogwarts are transphobic. And uh, and now you've got this crap of Atomic Heart. Yeah, seen it from yeah, Velma, Saint Row. Well, it just desensitizes this point, but now it feels like there's some actually good games are coming out. People just look for any kind of controversy because we're used to expecting it as much as we're used to expecting games to come out buggy or incomplete. I don't know. I think there are some people just need to go out and touch some grass. <laughs> Dominic Trader Films. I like, I like that comment, to be fair. Just, just saying this. 100 likes as well. I, I like that comment, too. That's a fucking... It's a good one. But, yeah, that's... I mean... I've The only thing that got me was the whole kind of taking your name and physical address and sending it to the Russian authorities. That was a bit weird. If that's true, then that's something I want to avoid. But if they ever gets kind of rectified or they come out and say, no, 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 no. You know this is uh this is bullshit then um then i'll i'll, I'll happily play atomic heart because i like to i like i liked you know i like the look of it can't lie but yeah that's it for me thanks a lot appreciate it catch you later